So Tim Waltz uh, is dual purpose. He's white. He's old. He's kind of a little roly-poly. Not trying to body shame. I don't do that, but just descriptively. And if you're not paying attention to the fact that he is a radically, uh, tyrannically capricious hater of all things aligned in any way, shape, matter, idea, faction, or form with God Almighty, he's just your uncle who served in the National Guard. Well, I mean, until it was time to go to combat. And then, then he said, oh, I was planning a run uh, for Congress, and so I didn't go into combat. But then he went out and said things like, uh, the weapons of war I carried into battle. You know, lying about being in combat. He's also something else, though. He's a pervert. Tim Waltz is a pervert. He reminds me very much of a lot of the perverts in the Democrat Party. He reminds me in a weird way, though, of a guy who was a gym teacher who, believe it or not, came after both me and my sister. Yeah, I'll make that comparison with an ad that the tourism department in the state of Minnesota, which of course is now changing its flag to look like the flag of Somalia, I'll play this ad for you and explain why this grooming ad reminds me of my gym teacher in elementary school. We'll get started right now. Today is the day the Lord has made and these are the times through which God has decided we shall live. Tim Waltz, dual purpose guy. He's white, he's roly poly. If you're not paying attention, he could appear unthreatening. If you are paying attention, you understand that he's further to the left than Kamala Harris has ever been, even as the installed figurehead. See, the issue with Kamala Harris is there is no Kamala Harris. She has no grounding, no moral framework, no moral structure whatsoever. If it avails her of power, she'll go and sleep with a married man, if it avails her of power. Well, in that matter, her husband, Doug Emhoff, availing himself of power, decided to go have an affair with the nanny. So maybe this is a mutual thing. It's common in politics. The other aspect of Cami is, though, of course, the chameleon-like person. That's the issue about is she Indian or black. It's not whether she has both you know, backgrounds in her DNA, both cultural backgrounds. Of course she does. The issue is the chameleon. It's to my advantage to be Indian, so I'll be Indian. It's my advantage to be black, so I'll be black. It's to my advantage to laugh and cackle and love putting black parents in jail because their kids are truant, and then I'll turn around and raise money to bail out black rioters. Well, not all black, but largely black rioters who burn down police stations and such. It's the chameleon-esque nature. Tim Waltz is not a chameleon. Tim Waltz is a hardcore leftist pervert. You cannot be of a normal sexual view and say, we're going to make our state a sanctuary for confused 13-year-olds to come into our state and have their sexual genitalia permanently altered and destroyed. That is not a normal view of kids. It's not a healthy view of kids. It's an over-sexualized view of kids. You cannot, as Tim Waltz did just recently, come out and say, it is un-American to tell kids what books they can read. No, it's not. It's very much American to look out for little ones, to say that book is not appropriate for you, and no, you're not going to look at pornography. Well, in schools or elsewhere. Now, parents can make the decision to have their kids look at porn, and you know what sort of parents those are. They're perverts. They're parents who've probably been harmed on their own. I have no idea if Tim Waltz was harmed. No idea. I know this. He's harming others. I want you to see this ad in a second, this ad that they're running. The Minnesota Tourism Board is running. And look, it's money. I get that. You probably know what the gay TM is. And then I'll tell you about this gym teacher after you see this and why I see this comparison. Huge money in the gay TM. Do you know what that means? Back in the day in the separate country of Washington, I had lunch with a guy who is an unbelievably talented talk radio host. To this day, he dominates um, many, many day parts. Well, not many day parts, but dominates his day parts. Yeah. I won't say his name because they don't have permission to say it. And it was a private conversation. And what he said to me, he was talking about behind closed doors. So I'll just say this. He described to me a gay TM. I said, why is it that these Republicans don't recognize what the sexual left is doing to kids, what the sexual left is doing to, um, to culture, forcing this stuff down people's throats and the, the gender stuff. And this is when they were starting to kids. 
And he said to me, it's the gay TM. I go, what is this, ATM? Oh, what the sexual left lobby does is they go to weak Republicans and they say, we won't primary you. We'll never call you out. And through back channel methods, so it can't be traced back to us, we will fund your campaigns. It's the gay TM. See, money follows politics like sweat follows exercise. They just go together. Money, where's yours? Did you see the stock market drop? Did you see the whip back that then whipped back against itself? Did you see the volatility? Did you see that seven companies that get 40% or so of every single investment dime on electronic trading platforms, 40% to seven companies? Did you see that they lost a combined somewhere around a trillion dollars in value? Is that right? Yeah, somewhere, no, it's about 500 billion in value in one day, in a single day. When that happened, how much of your retirement account was affected? How much is affected by inflation? Or your savings account, if you're younger, how much is affected by inflation? All of it. Here's something you can do for yourself, and it's free, and it's like money following politics and sweat following exercise. Go get a coach. Go do that. Go to knowyourriskradio.com and sign up for a free, no obligation assessment by my friend and brother, Zach Abraham. You'll meet with him. You can do it in person in his offices near Seattle. You can do it on video. You can do it on the phone. Yeah, your spouse can attend as well, or it's just you. You decide. Go to knowyourriskradio.com or call him at 866-779-RISK. Bulwark Capital Management is an investment advisor representative of Truck Financial LLC and SEC Registered Investment Advisor. Investments involve risk. You could lose money. Past performance doesn't guarantee future results. Truck 24-244, knowyourriskradio.com. So here's an ad running from the Minnesota State Tourism Department. It's promoting kids and so-called gender care, and it was run for big money, you know, for sex tourism and such. Hey, okay, so can I describe that? Um, I don't know if that was a woman or a fake woman. It was very quick, but the flashing and shaking of the breasts. Now that is an upside-down drag queen doing a pretty good cartwheel. I'd say, no, not full extension on the arms, but pretty good. And teens in the audience said, whoa, 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 what was that? And there's some sexualized dancing. gender care there is a huge difference between saying and believing that in our lives we're going to encounter people who are same-sex attracted in your life you've encountered people who've had affairs in your life you've encountered people who go out and commit fornication in your life you encountered people on a daily basis who use pornography and we love them right of course we do they're our friends and our family, and they're fallible. We all have sin issues. There's something altogether different, though, about creating a tourism based upon not just affirming, celebrating, pushing, promoting those ideals. And it's not even really the ideals, it's the activities. When you engage in indiscriminate sex with a large number of people, you end up, of course, exposed to diseases, but you also end up exposed to extreme confusion. And for kids... For kids who are still developing, do you understand what they're developing? When they tie their pleasure center at a young age to sexual contact with a whole bunch of people, do you know how difficult it is later to wind that all back? I'm just going to have sexual contact with one person. I'm going to enter into marriage as God prescribes it. One man and one woman. I'm going to be monogamous. When you've spent a life having your flesh thrilled in every single capacity, that's going to take a huge helping of the Holy Spirit to get over that and to stop those behaviors. It's just like someone who's always given themselves the drugs they want or always had limitless, limitless amounts of money. If you've ever gone through a phase in your life where you've had just the money pouring in and all of a sudden you have to make a budget, that's a hard thing to do. Tim Waltz is a pervert. He wants to promote these activities for kids for God knows why. Is it sexual thrill? I don't know. I guess I'm calling him a pervert, so I'm suggesting it is, but I don't know that he gets a sexual thrill out of this. What I know is these are perverted ideas when they're employed to young people, when they're pushed and promoted this way to young people. There was a gym teacher 
at my school. This was in elementary school. And he held me back after school one day. And I don't remember what I did. I was always doing something. I was a really bad kid. I was really angry at the school system. And I think for a pretty decent reason. I've shared that with you, so I won't belabor it. And he held me after school and then came and got me and said, okay, I'm going to drive you home. I said, no, I walk home. He goes, no, not today. I'm responsible for you. I'm going to drive you home. I go, no, I walk home every day. I walk straight across that alfalfa field and I'm home. Nope, not today. I'm not letting you do it. So he made me get in his truck, little tiny Datsun truck or Toyota truck, one of the early revolutions of those. And so we're headed home and he stops at the Circle K and he says, I'm going to get some candy bars. Would you like one? No. Well, I'm going to get you one. So what do you want? I, I don't want one. Well, I'm getting one. I'll get you a Slurpee too. No, I don't want a Slurpee. I don't want a candy bar. I want to go home. So he goes into the Circle K and he comes out with not the small Three Musketeers bar, but the large one. And let's all admit something about the Three Musketeers bar. They were one of the top three candy bars ever invented. Do they still exist, by the way? The best candy bar, by the way, ever existed, went away very quickly. It was called Bar None. And don't even try to argue. Comes out of the Circle K, sits down next to me, hands me this great big, you know, uh, uh, Three Musketeers bar and something else. I can't remember. I remember the Three Musketeers bar because it's my favorite candy. So we go driving. And he says to me, did I tell you I've got three new puppies? Oh, want to come to my house and you can play with them? No. Did I tell you that I'm painting my basement and I will pay you a lot of money to come over to my house and help me paint my basement? I'm not coming to your house. This is my street, turn here. And I had my hand on the door, on the door handle. I, I was going to jump out. So he turns down my street, pulls up in front of the house. He goes, hey, listen, we don't need to tell your mom about me offering to take you up to my house or to show you my puppies and stuff. We don't need to tell her about that. And I, I opened the door, walked out, walked inside, <laughs> opened the door, said, mom, the gym teacher tried to molest me. That was my take on the guy. And my mom said, honey, he's just being nice. My mom was a teacher. She's a well-meaning lady. My sister comes marching down the hallway into the family. She goes, wait, 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 Mr. Blank? Yes, Mr. Blank. Oh my gosh, Mr. Blank, he grabbed my chest. He said, one day these are going to be bigger and beautiful. My mom looked. This has to be some mistake. It's not. So I did the logical thing. I called my dad <laughs> and dad made a visit to the gym teacher, not the social worker, dad, the six foot four inch redneck dad who could break an ax handle over his knee, had a visit with this guy in the parking lot. I was there sitting in the travel hall as my dad went and informed him that he was never going to talk to either of us again. We weren't going to his classes anymore. What did he look like? Look like a gym teacher. What does Tim Waltz look like? He's a roly-poly uncle. Oh, gosh. Served in the National Guard until it was time for combat. He hunts and fishes, ice fishes. He's the insulter. And he is, well, even less charismatic than figurehead Kamala. You will know them by their fruits, the Bible tells us. It's in Matthew 7, somewhere around verse 15 through 20. I don't know which. You'll know them by their fruits. Look at the fruits of what Minnesota has become under Tim Waltz. It's a mini Somalia. He allowed the Black Lives Matter Incorporated riots. He's openly kids against the wishes of the parents. And he is promoting as un-American the very idea that a parent would say to a child, no, you may not watch six people have sex, even if it's in a book. That's Tim Waltz. This is the Todd Herman Show. Please go be well, be strong, be kind, and please make every effort to walk in the light of Christ.